snap <laughs> you think we're good or should we do it one more time i think the the synchronization was fine i just like okay. i fucked up the snap because i was drinking coffee okay. like the sound feel? the sound of you it sucked. failure failure critical failure nat one. Oh man your mic just explodes <laughs> boom you're not synced ah, ruins everything oh man what were we talking about? We we're uh, talking about we we're talking about thumbnails. We we're talking about you're an accountant, just like editing stuff I mean, in general. I'm, I'm an accountant. Yeah, that's that's my my gig. That's your Mostly. main you job. That, yeah, that's my main job. So yeah, <laughs> basically, I'm in I'm in uh, uh, QuickBooks Online. I do forecasting uh, and budgeting, uh, and yeah, a whole lot. Been really busy lately with all of the. Uh, the COVID stuff, as far as the the payment protection program, the PPP and the oh, yeah. EIDL <laughs> programs, and and how just there's just new guidance on it almost every single day, and clients asking, hey, how does this work? Hey, how does that work? And half the time it's just like, the the government doesn't even know yet. I I I, I I've got no guidance for you. Or where's Shit. my application? That there, I it, it's in a black void right now. We're playing <laughs> the hurry up and wait game. Damn, I need to start consulting you for tax advice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. But I, I'm not. A, I'm not a tax accountant. I'm more of a. I'm a very good bookkeeper. No. Plus other stuff. No, uh, no. I, I've I've got some. I could I could give some tax advice for sure. So you, you have a contract. Have a day job, or... Moss. Oh uh, yeah, I'm an engineer. We went like two different directions there. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> you wanted to ask him, and I was like, oh, we should continue. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's fine. I was just wondering if you're a contract a contractor, if you have like a job at a <clears throat> actual place. So, yeah, so I work for a company, and so they essentially have uh, clients that come into the company, and then I get assigned as usually like a lead role for a client. There's usually a lead, and then uh, either a backup or a secondary, or whatever. Um, and so usually I've got a, a somebody who's an actual CPA who works with me, and then we've got uh, certain people who will do like uh some of the day-to-day -day background stuff so I, i'm trying to stay high level with it anyway long story short uh they bring in clients and then and then i work on them um and that's kind of how that works yeah interesting gotcha. hmm. so yeah i don't i don't i i could bring in my own clients um and then they would they would pay the company and then i would make my salary um and yeah, there's definitely a possibility for that. But we typically work with uh, businesses that are in like the one to $20 million in revenue um, area. So yeah, or startup companies. We, we got a lot of like tech startup stuff. So a lot of stuff that COVID and all this stuff hasn't really messed with them too much. Well, but yeah, what kind, of, what kind of engineering do you do, Rusty? Or sorry, Mossbag? <laughs> oh, I work at a HVAC company, so. We develop heat pumps, so it's it's kind of geothermal. Basically, you put pipes in the ground, and you exchange heat from the ground to your house, and oh, right. heat and cool your house that way. So, yeah, our AC busted a couple weeks ago. We actually had to call an HVAC guy for it. Yeah, I don't like take calls and go to places, but doing the design work, on you actually build the yeah. Yeah, or like doing drawings, te checking drawings, writing test requests for testing units, stuff like that. Interesting. That's actually kind of cool. I almost went to, I almost worked in HVAC. That was one of the things that I, I almost went and did. That my dad was like, "You should do that. You should do that." I'm like, mm, "Not I really." Like working with my hands. I'm not a, I'm not a construction type person. Oh yeah, and it it can suck when something's installed in a really uh, uncomfortable place where the unit's crammed into a corner and there's stuff all around it. Mm -hmm. It sounds like a whole thing. I mean, if you do it every day, it's probably not that bad. But 
Yeah. So my my other day job, if you will. So I'm I'm sure you guys know I'm I'm in the Air Force Reserves, and so I've deployed all over the right. world and fixed airplanes and this that and the other. And that's one thing where, yeah, there's definitely times where you have like really really big fixes that you have to do on airplanes. And it's just it's oh, it's yeah. tough. So so I I still do stuff like that and maintenance, and I know how to fix things and whatever else, but. Yeah, I I don't think I'd make that my 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 everyday job. No, thank you. One of one of my uh, older coworkers, he he's actually on the Air Force too, but I think he's just uh he's just personnel. Like he he does it as like a weekend job. Yeah, but he's still like he he's in a lot of those same environments. Like when shit goes wrong on a plane, like something has to be fixed. He's usually like the like his department, I guess. <clears throat> hmm. I don't know too much about it. Yeah. Oh, so what so, do you, what do you do, Rusty? I. Uh, I, miss, I actually, I have been, I guess you could call this luck. I'm not sure. I've been lucky enough to have content creation just like in general, like as my main gig, mostly because of, um, my time with TGN. I was a consultant with them for, uh, the almost five years, uh, November, 2020 would have been five years, but, uh, just basically like. Everything hap- Everything changed when the COVID nation attacked, and uh, we're kind of at a, like a, <laughs> we're kind of at like a, just like a halted stage right now, I and everything's this. just like, because CPM went way way down uh, for a lot of channels, ours included, and uh, we just had to make cuts, and a lot of the contracts were suspended. I don't know how much I can talk about it, <laughs> but like, that was my main gig for a while, like. The combined revenue between what I was earning on TGN and what I was earning on the TSF, uh, the Superforge, it was enough to be like a main job. And I've been trying to keep that steady, um, like with my own shit. I've been uploading like a shit ton more on like around two or three times a week on my own thing, just because like I have that much time on my hands now. Yeah. Ever since uh, TGN kind of, I'm not going to say got the shaft, that has a negative connotation to it, but I've had a lot more free time since it got suspended. And uh, yeah, I went to school for like, basically just like graphic design and like visual communication and typography and stuff like I was talking about before. And uh, yeah, it's it, it fell in line enough with what I was already doing on YouTube, I guess, uh, to make to make what I was doing kind of contingent to my major. So I just kind of doubled down on it and started doing a shit ton of videos and I started earning good revenue from it. So I was like, shit, I, I awesome. should keep this up. Yeah, that's really I've cool. Al- I've always it's- wondered how people were able to like take it to the next level, especially like gaming channels when it comes to like, I don't know. I've always heard that you're not supposed to make all of your money from Google AdSense and just just ads in in general. Oh, That's no. usually only like half to a third of your revenue. But it's just like, oh man, for me, it's just like I'm not doing a whole lot of other stuff. I mean, I, there's some tips and donations from the live streams, which are awesome. Um, but that's probably my biggest source of income, other than ads, is probably donations. And yeah, yeah. it's like you have to there there has to be a certain point where you have to like if you treat your channel too much like a business it becomes really mechanical and like artificial and you become watch mojo basically yeah. uh, but if you're too genuine with it and that's all you're doing um you say fuck fuckity fuck make shits is shit fuck and like networks don't want to advertise on your channel because like oh this isn't friendly yeah. so like it's a lot of it is striking a balance between like doing just enough to where ads still want to like advertisers still want to work with you but also like you don't become a complete sellout you know you, you have to strike a middle ground um so i'll go ahead uh, no i was just gonna say like what you guys are doing is probably like how you should like how you were saying you should never get all your money from adsense having a day job like as a side or having content like you should never have one stream of income just period and uh, I had, I technically did have two uh, with TGN, but uh, I've been flying solo for uh, I think about a good month or two now, because that just ended. Hmm. So that's well, fun. These are that's, precarious that's really times. Do what? These are precarious times, though. So these this is an unprecedented time. Yeah. 
it's yeah. nuts to see the the unemployment numbers the like on the graph and it's just like it's just like broken <laughs> oh shit yeah yeah i could imagine that's like especially as an accountant like hearing stories from like all the people that have got shafted especially oh yeah yeah fun stuff <laughs> fun fun stuff for sure so speaking of nothing to do with that, uh, fucking Silk Song. Let's. Uh, we wanted to talk about uh, how, uh, like, some of the, on the more mechanical side of like Silk Song's platforming gameplay and like how, like, what we expect to see from it. Uh, I think each of us had more than a couple talking points uh, for that. I definitely think Moss, uh, especially since he's played it firsthand, uh, can probably have some insight as to like what it feels like mechanically. And uh, I think a lot of, I think all three of us have like a good two or three things like on our wish list that we definitely want to see from the game. So uh, let's go ahead and talk about that. What's uh, what's like the number one thing that you want to see from Silk Song that that you think would just like really make the game for you? First off, Rusty, what what or sorry, Mossback, what uh what what either tools or abilities was there anything new that you were able to use when you were actually playing Silk Song that you weren't able to do in Hollow Knight just in the demo? Um well, you have a sprint button now. So, Ooh. basically one of so the Mario sh- style. Yeah, it's on one of the shoulder buttons. You hold it down and and Hornet goes into a sprinting animation. And I think when you jump while you're sprinting, you like do flips and stuff. She's just a lot more agile overall. And if you try and turn around when she's sprinting, she kind of like slips around. There's there's more momentum because hmm. in okay. Hall Night, in Hall Night, there's not much momentum at all, right? Yeah. The knight mm-hmm. stops on a dime. Whereas Hornet, if you're running, she kind of like. She kind of just keeps wanting wanting to go forward when you turn around, so that's gonna take some getting used to, I think. But is it like I, in general, or like do you only feel that momentum like when she's sprinting and you want to turn around when you're sprinting? Uh, mainly just when she's sprinting, I would okay. say, because even she has this new diagonal downward thrust that she does. I'm sure you guys have seen that. Yeah. Yeah. Which looks weird because it it only goes so far and then it stops, right? Yeah, that has no momentum. That's like you go downward. It's like a jab. Yeah, you go downward at a specific speed um, diagonally, and then she just sort of goes back to her regular falling downward speed. So Hmm. it's you have to make sure you're close enough to the enemy that you're within that range. Otherwise, you'll just like stop and hit them because you're in your idle falling state. Like, so, it still has to be coordinated. Yeah. That's interesting. And a lot of the enemies that you fight in the deep docks, you can't just spam that because they yeah, have they bells have like on domes. their heads. Yeah. Yeah, so... And as much as I wanted to use that move because it's fun, it isn't necessarily what you should be doing for these guys, for these enemies. But... You... you it is a more dynamic type of thing because when I think of Hollow Knight, I'm trying to think of enemies that actually had plated sides like that. You had the the husks with shields. Yep. Mm-hmm. And then you had garpedes and stuff. But other than that, there's there was a few. You had the, you had the giant husks. I think they were called, or the guard husks, the the, the ones that did the double damage. The you husk had... sentries. Uh, you had the ones that looked kind of like roly polies over in Crystal Peak, where their backs were um, oh, shielded. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so yeah, you had the little husks, and then you had the moss, ch- not charger, moss knights, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had shields too. A lot of the fools in the Coliseum, they had shields. Uh, yeah, there you go. Even the little so, guys yeah, in the crossroads. Like okay, so I was forgetting a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. I mean, it definitely but, looks like a lot of the enemies have, like, to match Hornet's agility and everything. Like, I think part of keeping that challenge, like, you're going to have to update the enemy movesets, too. Because, like, yeah. a lot of enemies in Hollow Knight that had shields, 
they were just like it, it was very easy to like go back and forth between defending and attacking because like all the enemies would be like i'm shielding i'm defending and now they'd be like okay now i'm gonna use my nail i'm attacking and i think <laughs> i think like a lot of the enemies in a silk song will like they'll be a little more like unpredictable with like when they're defending and when they're like in the deep docks there's like an enemy that charges at you with the shield yeah I that's, think that's probably, i think that i think yeah. you're gonna see that a lot yeah for sure i think you're gonna see more defending and attacking at the same time from enemies and i think as hornet with that like you're gonna have to use your agility and your momentum as like the crux of your combat because like you're gonna have to use that as leverage Mm -hmm. for a lot of different enemies which i'm excited for yeah and there's some interesting enemies in like the trailer do you guys remember that um very long creature that Mm. spits purple acid at you yeah right that thing was like yeah i don't know if that's a regular enemy if that's like more of a scripted encounter that's got to be a scripted encounter because it i mean the whole left side of that area that she's uh wall jumping up is uh it, it's a solid wall so it looks like it's the end of an area you know what i mean yeah Mm-hmm. so that would make sense i don't yeah, know it's it's a it's a big looking thing too a lot of the um do you remember in the treehouse footage where um because like we've been talking about how silk song is uh it's gonna have like a musical undertone kind of like a musical theme uh yeah we that's been like the running uh theory that we've all had for a while and i'd like mm. to see i'm trying to think of a good example did did, did, you, did any of you guys play like the uh, the newest god of war that came out not. okay nope. so there were these mini games in god of war where um you had to have like you would hit like there were these three bells that were placed around the environment and uh it was like these little mini games where like if you hit them like all three of the bells had to be ringing so you had to hit them in a certain time frame and uh if you hit all three bells at at uh like within like a certain amount of time a chest would open and it would give you like this really cool like health bonus or like it would give you a rare item and um something like that in a game like silk song just fits so fucking well in my head because you like in the treehouse footage you had an instance like that where you hit three of the bells and like a bench like appears yeah i want to see something like that because like if you had like maybe the bells were more spread out and you had to hit them all in like a certain time frame and like a door to a secret area would open or something i feel like Hmm. that sort of platforming would be really cool in a game like silk song yeah you have to hit one bell and while it's still reverberating or whatever you still you have to hit the other one one or two or whatever yeah like the idea would be for all three bells to play at once um maybe you could like use like because one of your tools is like this throwing knife kind of thing yeah maybe you could add that into it i don't know it'd be super cool to see what they they would do with that there actually is something like that if you look at some of the old maps for hollow knight in the forest of bones there was this apparently the sequence where you had to go through the whole area and find torches to light and once you lit them all a door would open and forest of bones or something very similar to it will be in silk song so maybe we'll see that i think that'd be really i don't know cool. yeah yeah that's that's a mechanic that we definitely haven't seen the whole light all the torches or do all the things in this room before you can press on progress. like we did yeah we we saw kind of not really with the the dream roots um whatever the plants were where you collect the essence and then the the plant fully grows but that didn't really do anything those things kind of just petered out like what was the whole point of gathering all the dream essence for those things anyways well it used to be more um important back when there weren't all these extra bosses all the dream bosses yeah that yeah makes sense, the yeah. extra dream bosses made it so you could get most 1800 essence without really having to do many of the roots yeah but it is it always was weird to me that the whispering root like the amount of essence you get from doing everything is just this random arbitrary number Mm -hmm. and it's not Mm -hmm. important so so and then uh moss when you did the demo were you able to use the the throwing projectile yes um i think it was can't remember if it was a shoulder button or if it was 
a face button. I think it was like Y or X, but I and then I, could you just keep using it over and over again until you ran out of whatever the currency is for it? Yeah. Um, basically, hmm. the way it works is, and I actually talked to Greg. He works. He's a playtester for Team Cherry. He right. said that it kind of came from Castlevania too, because in, in like the castle, uh, the Castlevania games, maybe it's the first one, but you get hearts, mm -hmm. and the hearts let you use an item. You spend hearts to use it, so that's kind of where the idea came from. You get these shell shards, and then when you sit on a bench, you pay shell shards to max out how many of the items. To item. repair your shit, basically. Uh, okay. The so, Got it. So you can only hold 10 or 20 or whatever the, the number is. I think the yeah, max is so, like 400. Well, that's the shell shards, but not necessarily the number of throwing stars or whatever they are. Yeah, so when oh, I throw, throw yeah. when you throw one of the white, one of the weapons, you have this little circle that go that ticks down and eventually you run That's out right. and you can't use it anymore. Okay. So then okay. when you yeah, sit at a bench. About that. Okay. Yeah, and I I think it's a really cool system. Just got it. So yeah, so you can't just throw them indefinitely. You have to get back to a bench to repair it, which then you you're using that currency. Yeah. And I'm guessing that that might be separate from the rosaries, which are the currency. So there'll be like two yeah. different um currencies, I guess. Rosaries like, and then shell shards. Yeah, right. and, I'm, and I think rosaries will be coming from the civilized bugs, like the guys who wear the bells and stuff, and then shell shards will probably come from, like, the random creatures that don't seem to be civilized, you know? I think. That's speculation, I guess. I'm not sure if that's confirmed. How dare you speculate? Like in the Moss Grotto, <laughs> you're, it's just these weird-looking things that don't seem to be doing anything they just kind of exist yeah i know what you're talking about whereas there's in the deep docks there are guys that are actually like shoveling coals and stuff they're working towards something right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah so you guys know the the one tool where it uh when it gets thrown down it kind of looks like a saw blade that just kind of continues yeah. <laughs> forward on the ground that looks that so fun looks awesome that looks but so it, fun it reminds me of the one uh, boss fight that they have in there. Uh, what's her name? Uh, Carmitia? Carmitella? I don't know. It, it's the the one female looking ant bug who um, her her gown or dress opens up into like a, a circle. Do you guys know what I'm talking about? Carmelita. Carmo, yeah, the Carmelita. Queen. Yeah. Let's see if I can't find. Yeah, I always remembered her name was Carmelita because that's that was the cop that chased you in Sly Cooper. <laughs> I was like, oh, Carmelita. Yeah, yes. fun fact, I don't know how to read, so um, so there's that. <laughs> that's, wh that's why I never script anything. I never learned how to read. It, it, it just wouldn't come out right. Um, let me see if I can't find the image of her doing her uh, move. Yeah, she has those double-bladed... Um... Yeah, so, so that even that, so around. that item that she's holding looks like kind of similar to a saw blade, but then her whole dress turns into a saw blade when she jumps up into the air. Her her fighting style kind of reminds me of Grimm in a way. Hmm. It's like, especially because like, it, it, in the, um, where she was like, when you saw a gameplay ever, wasn't there like an audience watching you like while you were doing the fight? I feel like I remember that. Yeah. Yes, there I, is. I feel like that's, is. yeah. Oh, I feel like what? that's that where audience. I draw. I drew the parallel to Grimm, and I was like, "Oh, it's like Grimm too, basically." Interesting. I was trying to see if the audience looked uh, similar to the audience from who was watching Grimm, but I think it might be a little bit different. They're ants. Yeah. And they're, um, I don't know how you would describe this seating. They're like, they're Ooh. sitting in like the walls. That it have looks like, like an opera outdoors. house, kind of. Yeah. Like they're sitting in balconies. Yeah, balconies would probably be the way to describe it. Yeah. That looks kind of cool. Yeah, and I think yeah. that that is something you'll see that Team Cherry has kind of figured out what their philosophy is for boss design. Because Hall Knight's bosses, they're kind of all over the map. And I think that some of them, they just threw them in there without too much thought. 
So I think these, I hope that all these new bosses will be pretty well thought out and have a, a lot of interesting. Yeah. Cause like, who knows when I think of a simple boss that probably they just threw in there and it took very little time would be like crystal guardian. He jumps and then he shoots you and screams like those are his three <laughs> things. <laughs> so I don't know. I think that there'll be better design overall. I think that was one. Go ahead. Check the collab chat real quick. I just uh, posted the, the image of her doing her, her little dress spin thing that I was talking about. Duh, fuck. How do I... Duh, I figured it out. Yep. It's the one that looks like a hashtag. She turns into a little... She turns into a saw blade. She turns into a saw blade. So, so seeing stuff like that, it makes me think that... What, what, I'm trying to figure out, like, where are we going to get these tools from? Or how do we learn to build new tools? I think we defeat this boss. And then she's like, oh, yeah, by the way, this is how I did that. And you're like, cool. I'm gonna, I'm gonna make that thing. Well, I agree, but there's actually an item that looks just like what she's holding. So let me post that. Yeah, show me. The little ah, twin. Oh, the it's a twin. Has. Yeah. So. I thought, I thought I read something about how that might be something that that comes back to you. Like a boomerang. Yeah, like a boomerang. Hmm. Yeah, that'd be. I'll I just wonder post if this the... would it be like specifically for throwing, or would it be like a? Yeah, I'd oh. say it's for throwing. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, because you posted the thing where it's like it's one of the tools in the in the, in the red category, which seems to be like the, the like the tools in the in the in the red section uh, seem to be more practical. Like there's like a lifeblood syringe thing. There's a what's that highlighted is is that a pom pillow or like a cherry bomb or something yeah exactly. it's a pim pillow a pim pillow yeah <laughs> which is a funny little pun <laughs> i always uh, forgot the name of it yeah and then you have the little helper like the little spawn thing in the middle the drone yeah that's kind of like it's glowing like, wound but not really mm-hmm so the in the what is it the wiki they called that a flying familiar i didn't realize that a familiar is basically like a little creature um summoned by like a witch uh that's that's a that's a name that the that the fans gave it uh well i didn't uh, yeah yeah exactly it's it, it's a fan made name but i i didn't know what familiar meant Oh yeah, a supernatural entity that would assist witches in cunning folk in their practice of magic. You could like, oh, uh, you could summon familiars in Skyrim if you were a mage. Like that was like what they called them. Ah, okay. I think it's just a uh, just a name that sounds. Yeah, yeah. just an, I just didn't know what it meant. Yeah. Again, I can't read, so. I also, <laughs> I also think that uh, you could get a lot of animation uh, information from analyzing. Hornets animations uh, in the fights you have with her in Hollow Knight, because mm -hmm. um, like that tool at the center left, that's like that's that always put me in the mind of like the uh, the spike trap things that she summons in the second oh, fight. Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, and I feel like analyzing the move set that she has in the first game could kind of tell you a lot about what these tools could potentially be. Yeah, so based on these tools that we see here, I, it doesn't look like any of these tools are the one where she does the silk that goes all the way around her, right? Right. Uh, yeah, because she has like an AOE thing where she throws her needle and then like the... Yep. Yeah, but I can't... Uh, it doesn't look like any of these are that, but it could be just up, right? Could It might just not be pictured. I like how the one on the top right looks like it's just like a thumbtack. Like she throws it on the ground and you just step on it. <laughs> It's like yeah, a landmine. Like Did you get a good look yeah. at any of the... Um, uh, when, when you were playing it, Moss, uh, did you get a good look at any of what the tool items in like the blue or the yellow, yellow categories did? No, you really... Um, the menu didn't really have this menu at all. So okay, it was pretty limited. All I, re all I really had was those shiv needles that you throw i couldn't change it out for anything else 
Gotcha. But there is one other thing that Hornet has. So in addition to the tools, she can also use an actual spell like in Hollow Knight using her silk. Right. You can you can basically just throw your needle and it'll do a it'll do an attack. Okay. And I don't know if that's going to be a set thing that she learns multiple different things to do with that button or if that will be something else that can be changed with your uh, tools. Like, can I get a different spell move by changing what I have equipped? I don't really know. The whole... Yeah. Hmm. The whole crest thing is very interesting. I don't really understand how it works yet. I feel like a lot of these might be uh, like passive bonus sort of items. Um... I think I I didn't talk too much about it in the analysis thing that I did, like when this trailer came out, like over a year ago. But I remember uh, chatting with someone in the Hollow Knight Discord about it. It was like, be- because the combat in this game was designed to be a little more, like, a little more multifaceted, I guess. Um, we talked about the idea of there being passive effects in uh, kind of like how you had things like Gathering Swarm or uh, maybe Soul Catcher and Hollow Knight, how you had charms like that. Like, what mm-hmm. would those sort of effects look like in Silk Song? And uh, I think that's what, it, for a while, that's what I attributed the uh, blue and the yellow categorized items to be. Um, obviously, like, that that's not, there's no empirical, like, thing to suggest that. But, like, yeah, that's always the, the connection that I had is like, oh, like, one of these may be more passive effects um, uh, or like charms, air quotes, reserved specifically for passive effects like spell buffs and strength buffs and stuff like that because uh, the tools in the red section seem a little more practical. Like they're like usable items that you can throw at and do damage at things, right? Yeah, exactly. But the thing that is just so confusing to me is you have... In the trailer, you see the Wanderer Crest, and it has one red slot, one blue slot, and one yellow slot. But then you can change your crest, which makes me think that there are some that have more slots than others. More red or more blue, or or maybe it only has one slot when you first get it. Yeah, and if if red red is one button, how do you have multiple reds equipped? I don't know. Well, well, red might not be just one button. Mm, but then how do you have multiple reds equipped? Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, because yeah. if these are all different tools, interesting. I feel like it would be kind of like a charm thing where you could only you could only have one equipped at a time and you could only s- swap them out at a bench. Yeah, I guess I'm saying, like, if I have a different crest, what's it going to look like? Is it going to have one red and two blues? Or is it going to have two yellows? Or is it going to have two reds? Right. Or, or potentially just you have one that's just one red, and then as you get better crests, you can get one that's one red and one blue, and then later maybe it's just a blue and a yellow. Or both. Yeah. Like, like how many crests are there in the game exactly? I think I think that's an interesting question because like that factors into like what kind of builds you can have. Uh, is three like the limit? Because, like, I feel like, well, I don't know, like, having four or five mapped on a single qu- a single crest might be too many buttons to keep track of. Yeah, and we just mm. don't know how these crests, like, what these things do other than the, the ones that they show us. And the ones they show us all appear to be in the red section, I think. Let me blow this up a little. Let me see if I can actually take a better look at the... Because, like, I want to get a good look at some of these yellow some of these yellow charms here, but I, they don't look... I think they're too far down the menu for me to, like, see anything about them. Like, I could see, like, Wayward Compass maybe being a blue or a yellow, right? Like Right, yeah. Stuff no, like that. Oh, that top I left just... one does kind of look like... I don't know, kind of compassy. Not really, On the yellow kinda. section? Yeah. Yeah. That could hmm. be? Yeah. Um... The Stretching. one in the middle blue is like definitely Weaver Song influence because of like the shape. Definitely. Uh, so that might be a silk related thing. Like it increases your silk capacity, maybe. 
I don't know. Oh, like that, it's that could be, I suppose. Yeah, like I, I don't know. Like that's like it's like everything about just this menu alone. Like it seems so multifaceted, and like there's so many layers you could like. There's so many different directions you could go with it as far as analyze as far as analyzing. Mm-hmm. It's like it makes me like it definitely puts into perspective how much time they're spending on this game, and it it makes me more patient like to wait for it i guess Mm -hmm. because you're seeing the amount of work that's going into it firsthand with this menu and it's like you can definitely tell they want the game to be a little more layered yeah they're trying to find new mechanics to or ways to change the mechanics to make them fresh but still staying similar to the original hollow knight right it seems like so and I, I think the charm system in Hollow Knight is fantastic. It's a really good system. So I think I don't know because in, in that system you couldn't have a a button that just is dedicated to using a tool. All it did was like it affected things you already did, or did something passive. Right. So <clears throat> I mean, you had charms like um that could be argued as different like tool because you had elegy which is like fires projectiles from your nail or whatever uh, but that's just modifying something you already do right like it's not it's so, not like it's an accessory to something you're like it's not a tool all, all on its own mm-hmm. so i think they wanted to find a way to do tools and this is what they came up with so i guess we'll see what the other things do as God, just looking on. at this menu gets me so fucking excited Oh, yeah, it's... Oh, my goodness. So even just looking at the controller, it says... It, it tells you what you get with ZR and R as far as you get you get to use a, a tool if you use R, but it doesn't tell us anything about ZL or L. So, I mean, that could be our other tools right there, not easily. Oh, uh, yeah, that's that could make point. Yeah, that, that would make sense. There's there's just... the the They didn't tell us anything about those buttons. So, I mean, it could easily be red tool, blue tool... Uh, uh, or blue tool, yellow tool to L and, and ZL. That does raise an interesting question because in Hollow Knight you get permanent upgrades. Like Crystal Dash gets thrown on a shoulder button. Mm. And that's, Ooh, that's, true that's how that button gets used. So is Silk Song going to... Is it going to use tools instead or will there still be permanent movement upgrades? Because it sounds like the like her, her nail throw where she... she catches it or like it gets gets brought up to her nail like that might be a permanent upgrade I, I don't know that might be the equivalent to like the nail arts that you got in hollow knight yeah either that or double jump yeah yeah and the sprint ability is only in deep docks so that might be a a permanent upgrade she gets yeah i suppose that's what it seems like yeah well i don't know what a sprint lets you do maybe jump a little further well, the sprint also lets you the um, run the on the hot coals. Yeah, you don't have to sprint across those. You can just walk normally, and it won't burn you. Really? Yeah, I think. So. Yeah, because all it is is if you. It's just if you stand on them too long, you get burnt. Oh, okay. I'm pretty I sure. thought you had to run. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. fun to run. So it's fun. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense. Yeah, the, the sprint ability, it like. It that's definitely like it strikes me as an ability you wouldn't start with, kind of like the dash for Hollow Knight. It's like once you get it, like you realize how important of of a tool it is. Yeah, and sprint might be like the equivalent of that. It's like once you get it, you'll start using it a lot to access certain areas. God damn, dude! It'll be interesting to see how well it is. Uh, uh... Uh, or, or I get how do I say this? How how quickly speedrunners are gonna break it? <laughs> yeah, because you you know people uh, people are good. I, I don't know how they do it. I'm always thoroughly impressed with speedrunning and and how quickly they're like, well, I know I need to get to here, and this is the one thing in my way. How do I break this? Pause menu down slash whatever. And it's just like how did you figure that out? <laughs> Yeah, I do wonder if there'll be as many exploits in this game now that they have. <sighs> William has a bit more experience programming 
and they have Jack on the team who's a pretty good coder apparently. Right. That's what he says. I don't know. I I but. hope I hope so and don't hope so at the same time. For, yeah, for the same speed reason, runs, you know. <laughs> if the speedruns get too long, then at some point maybe I wonder if they're less fun to do. Or if they just become less accessible for for people to even want to try it. Like could you imagine if like Silk Song or Hollow Knight like the only way you could speedrun it like if you did an optimal run it was like an hour to an hour and a half like at some point people are like ah, f it whatever yeah i don't think that's too bad for a speed run there's a yeah. lot of factors that go into it like does the speed run have a lot of rng yeah and for sure if it does where is it at if there's a really difficult or rng heavy thing towards the end and if you you just get bad luck then it screws up your whole run yeah people get upset about that for yeah. sure so yeah, it'll be interesting because we don't know if Silk Song is going to be more um, linear than Hollow Knight or less linear in terms of how you progress through everything. I think it's going to be less. I don't know. Just purely based off of the the fact that you've got those uh, the message boards and whether or not you I, I don't know how much they are optional or not but i imagine that they will send you to different places depending on what you decide to complete and how that opens up the game or allows access to a new area i would imagine that those will i think so change, too yeah i think that'll change up your game and depending on so what order you do it might allow access to something early and I, I, hats off to team cherry for how well they made it made it in Hollow Knight to where you could get to the same area three different ways and <laughs> it all works. Like you got the that that was probably one of the the best things about the game. Like it or it's up there anyways. It was it was good. Yeah, I really like that. It got it holds your hand through Dirt Mouth, Forgotten Crossroads, Green Path, Fungal Wastes, and then usually you end up at City of Tears. And once you get through that, you really can go in like so many different directions yeah. yeah i think that's why silk song i'm predicting to be more open-ended than hollow knight because like i think like what really got me entranced in the games like universe was how open-ended things were right like it it really was a metroidvania in that true sense is like you could like you could get to any given area like three or four different ways there was and there was really no correct way to get to a certain point in the game and um, I think part, I think that's a huge factor as to why the game felt as massive as it did. Like it felt like its own world that you could interact with and everything. And that's because everything was so open-ended, like the, the pads of, of the levels would bend around and fuck themselves. And you could like, oh, you could get here to like six different places and like, oh, I'm in the deep nest again. Cause this leads here or like, oh, I'm in, I'm in the gardens now. And I feel like Silk Song is going to have a lot more of that just like because i i think a lot i think there are too many people that liked the exploration in hollow knight for them to to not double down on that in silk song you know i mean they even they even came out in one of the interviews and i think it was on the hollow knight um interview when it was coming out on the nintendo switch um i can't remember who it was i think it was ari was talking about how the the feeling that they were trying to get was just have the game feel like it was so immense that you couldn't find the edges of the game and uh they obviously did a really good job of that and so hmm. i'm i'm very interested to see um what feeling it is that they're that they want to achieve with silk song yeah I know that they always compare it to old NES games where you just think, oh, what if I could break through this wall? What's on the other side of it? Just going for that sense of wonder. Yeah. Right. And I think Silk Song, does, or Hollow Knight did that really well. Oh, yeah. And in, in Silk Song, it appears to be that your main goal will be to ring bells. You find these ancient shrines and you ring the bells inside of them. So I'm guessing at some point you'll get to an area where a person marks your map and says, here are where the bells are at, go find them. And mm. they're just like, they're in blank spaces on the map because you haven't been anywhere near them yet. If they, if they do it like Hollow Knight, that's what it would be. And I would be totally fine if they did it like Hollow Knight. Because... I would be completely fine, yeah. If it, mm. if it works, like, don't fix what ain't broke, you know? Exactly. I would be completely on board with that. 
And I think that would be a really good opportunity for them to just kind of like kind of flex how big Silk Song really is. Because like once I remember that once the dreamers were uh, pointed on me on the on the map, like when I got to that part of the game, I saw the three dreamers like spanned out and I was just I was like, holy fuck, <laughs> like how much of this game have I not seen yet? Oh, yeah, that's very true. And that was like a huge point for me where I was like, OK, I'm going to have to spend at least a few weeks on this game. And I think for Silk Song, you could just like I, I imagine like having that having that event play out when you find when you find the bells or like when like you're the three or four maybe even more bells are marked for you on the map there's just like this one like out in no man's land all the way to the left and you're just like fuck how do i even get there <laughs> yeah that'd be cool that's like two or three areas over at least oh man uh, silk song but it's gonna we be don't exciting even know if it's real so <laughs> yeah <laughs> It's not even. It's not even a thing. Somebody is saying it, it's a. At this point, it's kind of like Half Life Three. I don't know I don't if it's, it's that. I don't, I don't think it's that because we've seen evidence uh. of gameplay and stuff existing about the game. Half Life Three, you didn't get shit. Yeah. Have they even said it's actively in development? Half Life Three or yeah, Half Life Three. I think a lot of people are just saying, uh, like. Alex came out on the VR and a lot of people are just saying, oh, that's Half-Life 3. Hmm. Yeah, that's true, right? It's honestly a good game. Like, it's not, uh, I don't have a VR personally, but I, I did play some of it, like, at a friend's place. And f the fact of, the fact that it's a VR, a VR game and, like, how well put together it is, it's, it's pretty impressive. It looks good. It's really, it's really a decent game, like, by itself. All right, so unfortunately, I have to end it here. I have to end a little bit early. My uh, my wife needs some help with the with the babies. It's starting to wake up. Ooh, the baby uh -oh. got to do adult things. I got yeah, I got to go do adult things. You know, <laughs> the old ball and chain. She's uh calling me out. <laughs> it's like Are you trying to be a YouTuber. I'm like yeah, shoot. Pays the bills. Kind of, sorta, not really. <laughs> Oh yeah, I get a lot One of flack from my friends. Like, you don't have a traditional job; you just curse in front of a camera for fifty minutes, and you get money off of it. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's yeah, it. that's it. Yeah, you should try it. You should do it. It's yeah, easy. I'm just like, and like, why? Why is that? <laughs> it's like, why are you looking down on me for that? It's awesome. Yeah. So anyway, okay, I'm gonna end the. I'm I'm, I'm ending it. Thanks, guys. I appreciate you. All right. It was, it was fun. It's yeah. been real. Take All it right. easy. All right. Bye.